Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Around the Rim and today my guest is Coach Billy Snell. Coach Snell, you coach the Rockets here from 1970 to 1972, correct? That's right. And you coach both the, the men and the women. Yes. First of all, talk, talk to me about that because that's not as common anymore. You don't see in programs where there's one coach coaching both teams. Well, at that time, I think most all of the schools in, in Rutherford County had, had only one coach in, mm -hmm. in high school. And, and a lot of them the, the, the coached, coached the junior high also, the seventh and eighth grade. Uh, so I coached both boys and girls high school and the boys in, in, in the junior high school. And Ronnie Eakes coached the girls. But it was it was just a common practice in the, in, in the schools. Then uh, somebody may, may may or may not be interested, but we they paid they paid each coach five hundred dollars during during that time for coaching. Was that it per, per team or just that was no, total total five hundred dollars five hundred dollars? And then when they when they closed the schools and, and went to Riverdale, they they put it on a percentage of uh, different percentages. Football I think was twenty two percent of a BS at five years, and that's what they paid, you know, what a BS, what you'd get if you just a BS at five years, and 21% for basketball. And then that's when they kind of split it up and put, you know, had two coaches in high school, one for the boys and one for the girls. Yes, sir. So at, at the time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as the ladies went, you played three on three, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, they for those, I think that was changed in, in sometime later in the 70s to, to five on five, but it was three on three then. Okay. What was that like, coaching the three on three game? You know, what are some of the differences that you have to account for versus five on five? Well, it's, you have to do, uh, uh, the offenses were a whole lot different and, and, and the defensive schemes were a lot different too because they could, they could, you know, you could isolate a person more more on three on three than you could on five on five, and mainly you played to a man to man defense where when you went five on five you could play some zones or or something like that right there some chick defense you know if they had one person that was going to do all the scoring. A lot more open spacing on the floor, I would definitely assume. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, and and you always jumped it, jumped the ball to begin a quarter. In the, okay. center, in the center circle, and that's what the little, little that's what the smaller circle was in there. And most of the gym now don't even have that small circle in there, but uh, uh, they jump the ball to begin there. each quarter, each no quarter. matter what. Yes. Um, some of some of the players that that you can remember back to um, some of the some of the guys that that really stood out to you. You know, talk about some of the special players that you got to coach. Well, uh, uh, you know. We didn't have a whole lot of people come out. We just had to do what we could with the ones that came out and everything. Uh, uh, Terry Frost, I remember Terry, Terry Frost playing, and uh, he was one of the better better players. Uh, had a little guard by the name of Randall Billings that that, that came to Rockvale, and and he he uh, did a pretty good job uh, running running the offense and things like that right there. But uh, uh, Leonard Crawford from when they closed Christiana, he was uh, played over there, and he came over and played for me. And he's probably one of the the most outstanding players that I that I had in the two years at Rockville. You know, I mean, we they there was it was all you know decent decent ball players, but nobody really stood out. Uh, but he did, and he got his knee torn up one night at Rockville and had to have it operated on. So he he didn't get to finish the year, but uh, I think he went on. He got it fixed. At Vanderbilt, and they, uh, after that, he, he was able to go and go to school and play. He played football in a co in college. I saw him one time after that, and, and you know that's. You remember where he went? No, I don't. That's been that's been yeah. a good while yeah. ago. Yeah, that's okay. You know? That's okay. But uh, uh, he 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 was a he was a good kid, and and uh, I mean I had several good kids, and well, none of them bad kids. You yeah. Know? But I mean. Yeah. He was just—he was just a really good kid, outstanding, and willing to do whatever you ask him to do. And I mean, I, I remember one time in particular, we, we was playing Page, mm -hmm. and they had a real good ball, ball player. He was averaging over 20 points a game, and I—I I asked him to guard him and guard him man to man, full court, and, yeah. and he did. And and you know that kind of took him out of offense a little bit because he spent so much energy playing defense. But he stopped that guy 
almost gold. <laughs> wow. Tell me about the old barn that you guys played in. <laughs> How the people looking. Goose was, te we were talking to Goose a second ago, and he was telling me there'd be people up top peeking in the windows. You'd go to take a jump shot, and you'd look up, and there'd be a pair of eyes staring down. What was that like? Well, uh, I can tell you what it was like when I played. It, all, all the old gyms were, were basically had posts in them. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, uh, and, and, the, and of course I went to Eagleville and it, it, had, it had a post in it and Rockvale's, Rockvale's gym, where I wound up, we'd play in there and of course the gyms would be packed when Eagleville and Rockvale played. And this gym at Rockvale had a little, little, little narrow red line all the way around the, in, all the, way around the inside, the out of bounds line where that the defense couldn't get over that line because there was about that much room between the out of bounds and the, and the first row of people. And a lot of times people have to turn sideways for you to get out of bounds to throw the ball in. Oh, wow. like that right <laughs> but, I, but all the gyms were, were you know, s the small gyms, like, 40, like 44 feet wide and, and, uh, and maybe, maybe 48 feet long or something like that right there, you know. Or, well, it's a little bit longer than that, but I, I believe 84 feet long. And, but anyway, uh, the county, we had, they played a county tournament every year, and we'd get to go to MTSU to play in the old alumni mm -hmm. old gym, and they like to kill us. We'd, we'd get yeah, to practice. We'd get to practice. Big. <laughs> yeah, we'd have, to, we'd have to practice. You know, it's a whole lot bigger than what we used to. And it was, we'd just run and run and run and think yeah. you'd get to the end, but you know, you'd be some room left after, after you got down there. Oh yeah, Coach. Last question I got for you. Um, here in about 30 minutes, we're getting ready to tip a game off here tonight between Rockville, Eagleville. It's been 50 years since that last happened. How special is that to you to, to be able to see this tonight? Well, I, I, I think, you know, because they're in different divisions, Rockville mm -hmm. and, and Eagleville, and, and I think it's good for the communities, you know, to, to, to get back to some of the old things that we yeah. used to do all the time. And uh, I, I can remember, you know, when, when I played and when I coached, We'd all, you know, I mean, you know, we'd all, the coaches would get together on a Saturday morning a lot of times in Murfreesboro, the AGs, the Sporting Goods, mm -hmm. had a little place back there in the back, and all the coaches would get together and have a big time, talk about the games on Friday night and things like that right there. We, you know, we were all friends yeah. at that time, and, and that's what I'm, when I, when I coached in my last two or three years, that's what I missed about it is that you can get up, walk away, shake hands with them, and say good game or whatever, you know, and turn around and, You'd, you'd go your way and they'd go their way. It wasn't, uh, wasn't nothing, you know, no talk much about it mm -hmm. among most of the coaches then, you know. There was two or three that you could, you know, would deal with and have fun with and stuff like that right there. But, you know, they'd try to beat your brains out and you'd try to beat their brains out and after it was all over, <laughs> that was it. Yeah. You know, I mean, we'd go on just like, just like nothing had happened. And, and, uh, but they don't, they don't seem to want to do that today. You know, they'll walk up and shake hands and want to go his way and the other and go the other way. And, yeah. They don't, that's it, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, I don't like that part about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that I think they're all. A lot of them now is this is win and win at all cost, and then they don't they don't. It's like take no prisoners, you know. I mean, you know, they just they just don't take them. They just try to beat them as bad as they can and and let it go. They're looking out for their own image or something like that right there, and they they forgot about the kids. You know, I think it's mostly for the kids and for them to learn to to uh, have to work hard to get better and things like that right there rather than the, the coaches has kind of made it them. And, and, and mm -hmm. I guess in, in a sense the, the, the people dealing with it too do that, uh, the higher ups, you know, the principals and the, and the superintendents and the people on the board and things like that right there, they, they look for those people to, to bring attention to the school or to the team by winning and, and everything. It's all about winning now instead of building character or anything like that right there with the kids. That's a great point. Hello, Coach Billy, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add that I may have missed or? Well, I, I, you know, it's been so long. I've been out of, I've been out of it 20, 21 years. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, I, they're doing things today that, that, that I didn't, you know, we didn't think about a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everything, and the kids are quicker. They're, they're uh, probably more athletic than, than they were back back when I when I coached and, and mm -hmm. everything and and uh, they got more kids that can play I know that when I was I coached 18 years at Eagle and a lot of times I wouldn't have but maybe 10 come out for basketball 
you know, wow. it wasn't as big as it is now. And you, and you know, you have to, you have to take, we'd have to take what we get. And now they can, they can kind of pick and, and select. choose. Yeah. Pick and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they'll have, they'll have 15, 20 people come out, and, and, and you know, they can select. And, and the competition gets better the more people you have, mm -hmm. because I, I, I believe that a kid will only put out as much effort as he has to to get to play. And, and, and I, I've had two or three years out there that we didn't have about, about eight or nine, eight or nine people on a team, you know. And it's hard to practice or to do anything very, very well if you do, if you don't have not, enough. Not to, as much depth to get no, tired. No, yeah. yeah, they get tired. And, 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 and you know, the, the, the fifth, let's say the fifth player, they only have to be better than the sixth player, you know. So they only got to, they only got to be better than two or three, two or three people to get to play. And that's, you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't particularly like that thing, that about it, but you, ha but you have to deal with it. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Billy Snell on Around the Rim.